For the past year, I haven't carried a credit card debt, but this wasn't always the case. I first got a credit card a decade ago when I was 24 years old. I used it here and there when I was short on cash or wanted something I didn't have the savings for. Despite this, I never really thought my spending to be out of control, as I only ever carried a small balance over month to month. As a proportion of my income, my balance was probably two or three percent. That is maybe 800 or a thousand dollars on what was a 45k salary. But with each year I earned a little more and with each year I spent a little more. And then, and then one day I opened my statement to find a balance of four thousand dollars and this scared me. Not to worry I thought, I found a balance transfer and started to pay it off. Great. I'll be debt free, I thought. But had my behavior changed? Well, no, it had not. Now I had three cards. There was my original card. There was my new card with the balance transfer and a new card I decided to get that had points. And with that, better get those rewards, I thought. And I used that card for all my everyday transactions. Then one day I opened my statement to find a balance of $10,000 and this really scared me. But you know what? Never mind. I took a personal loan, I paid off the balance transfer, I paid off the rewards card, and I took a little extra loan as a, as a safety buffer. Great, I thought to myself. Once I've got this paid off, I'll be debt free. But had my behavior changed? Or even my thinking? Well, no, it had not. A year later, I got a new job, one which had significant travel. It also involved working with people who made a lot of money. Better use my personal card for all this travel and get the points, I thought to myself. Oh, and uh, yeah, we're out for drinks, so yeah, no worries, I'll get the next round. But sometimes I'd be stupid and I'd be late on my expense report. And guess what? Now I was footing the interest. Sadly, as these repayments built up, I kept finding myself with too much month at the end of the money. Unwilling to truly compromise on my lifestyle, I'd put it on the plastic. Then one day, I opened it up to find a balance of $50,000. This was owed across five different cards. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> At this point, I wasn't just scared. I was fucked. And so began one of the lowest points of my life and four grueling years of getting back on top of it. Before we go any further, this is a quick disclaimer. This is just my journey and it definitely doesn't constitute financial advice. I'm not a financial services professional and nor am I claiming to be one. And I would encourage you to speak to someone who can address your individual situation. Well, four and a half years on, I'm out of the woods. The day I made that last payment, I cried with relief. So the first thing I want you to do is just take a moment to think about and really embody what it would feel like to finally be debt free, to finally have that weight gone. Because it, it can be a reality and you will feel a weight lifted you never thought possible. In terms of specific tactics, I'm going to keep it pretty short. There is a whole lot of information on the internet about how you can specifically save deal with credit cards, etc. Rather, I think there's some more important insights to be discussed. So in short, here's what I did. I sold everything I didn't need. I got rid of my car for a much cheaper one, and this allowed me to knock off one of my cards entirely. I attempted to get another personal loan and then a balance transfer, but both of them were subsequently rejected. However, I did manage to negotiate a low rate payment plan with my main credit card provider. Next, I got any bonus that I received and I put that straight on my debts. I got a second job, which sucked. <laughs> and I cut my lifestyle back as much as I could, but I reckon I could have gone further. And finally, I just remained consistent. I knew it was going to be a slog, but as I gained momentum, it actually snowballed way quicker than I thought possible. What I do wish I'd done is contact one of the debt consolidation or management agencies in Australia, there's a company called My Budget, and there's a variety of out. Um, I've heard they're pretty good, and I think that would be a fantastic idea to contact one of them um, in your region if you are struggling. But let's look at some more insights. Saving on a low income can seem like 
utterly pointless. It takes forever just to put the most measly amount away. It can seem totally worthwhile to put it on the plastic and deal with it later. And I certainly had this attitude. The trouble is, by buying something you ultimately can't afford yet, you're stealing from your future self. But you also steal from your future self's ability to buy the essentials. That is, by purchasing things you should be saving for, and thus incurring monthly repayments, you make it more likely that you'll also have to start putting essential items such as groceries and petrol on the credit card. Second, it can seem really difficult in the moment, and particularly if you're young, but the chance that you will earn more money in the future is reasonably high, and thus the rate at which you can save will increase. Which leads me to my final point. From Luke 16, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. The thing is that by building poor financial habits now, you rob yourself of savings later when you would have had the ability to save at a much greater rate. Don't think for a second that if you are not doing it now, you're suddenly going to be able to do it when you have more resources available to you. Continuously carrying a balance of any proportion to your income is, in my opinion, a bad idea. And I think this is the case because it sets your psychology up for carrying more and more debt. Take a look at the figure on the screen. Do you notice the inflection point? This wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have been comfortable with a continuous balance. To the previous point, do the math on the debt you have and really, really, really consider the impacts of going further into the hole. When I was carrying $10,000 of debt, it was costing me $2,400 a year in interest. By the time it got to 50, I was totally fucked. The average interest on $50,000 is $710 a month. That's over eight and a half thousand dollars a year. That's interest only. What I'd get you to do, go over to nerdwallet.com, there's a link in the bio, and use the credit card interest calculator to figure out how much you're paying each year. And I can tell you what, this will give you a real smack in the face as to just how much you're paying out each month if you keep going. Maybe I'm a little silly, but <laughs> when I first got my points card, I hadn't realized you don't actually get them unless you pay the card off in full. It's not for the spending, it's for the repayments. Additionally, I reckon the points are worthless unless you meet one of two criteria. The first is that sign up bonus with a new card, you know, where you get 50,000 points for minimum spend. The second is if you're doing huge volumes of transactions for say a business, where you will actually accrue a large number of points. For mine, with an average spending, you'd get maybe one flight to Sydney and back a year. Now, that's not terrible, but there are much better ways to game the points system if that's actually your intention. This is for all of you who travel for work, and it's particularly relevant to those of you who have just started traveling for work. Remember how I'd mentioned I'd been putting those work expenses on my personal card? Well, here's the thing. If you pay for work expenses on a work card, and the payment is missed, it's the business's problem. If you pay for work expenses on your personal card and the payment is missed, it's your problem. As tempting as it can be to get those points, don't make their shit your issue. You'll notice that throughout my journey, I was pretty much unwilling to truly compromise on my lifestyle. When I reflect on it, it had a lot to do with shame and insecurity. I just didn't want to be seen as a failure. And if I admitted that I'd run out of money, well then I'd risk that happening. What's more, and this is the really insidious thing, this created a deeper sense of shame that for only further reinforced the problem. But the reality is, if you wanna get out of debt, you're going to have to compromise on your lifestyle. That means no going out, no treats, nothing, until you've got it under control. Because the truth is, you're going to have to compromise eventually. With the debt growing, it will catch up to you. And then you don't get to choose to compromise. And so this leads me to my final point. I had to accept that it was 110% my fault. And sadly, I waited until it bludgeoned me around the bloody head to learn this lesson. But if you're carrying a credit card debt and it's getting worse, then I'm sorry, but you are making the wrong financial decision. And you absolutely need a plan to get out. Like plain and simple. And look, I know there are situations where this will happen from time to time. People can be in some pretty sticky and pretty desperate situations. 
And so I say this not to judge you, not to denigrate you or to put you down. But particularly if you are not in one of these situations, you know, you were like me, you were young, you didn't have any responsibilities, you were just going out and being a dickhead, then you need to face the reality that what you're doing hasn't been working, that you probably need help and you probably need a strategy. In addition, nothing will change unless you truly believe you can change. I really want to hit that home. Unless you feel like it's possible, it won't be. So you need to let that old self die and start anew. It's not easy, but it is possible and holy hell, it's worth it. Finally, when I tell people about this experience, the question I usually get is, how on earth did that happen? Like, what the bloody hell did you spend your money on? And as you would know now, it wasn't the big lavish expenditures that did the damage. It was the small day-to-day -day concessions. Once the snowball had started, it becomes way too easy to have too much month left at the end of the money. And suddenly it's things like groceries, and petrol, go on the credit card, not the new clothing and fancy things. I hope you're watching this as someone who doesn't have any debt. Or perhaps you're someone carrying a little bit of a balance and it can serve as a warning what not to do. But if you're watching this as someone who's desperately stuck, then I hope it can serve as a jumping off point for your own journey and proof that it is absolutely possible to turn it around.